Hi, this is Farrell, and I'm back with Robot Todd, pages 18 and 19 from issue 3. This is the way I start pages as I rule out the borders. I do these thumbnails first here, and I knew that they were both going to be four-panel grids. Most of the book is a four-panel grid. There's a few exceptions to that. Um, every once in a while I do a, a splash page or a double-page spread. And here, uh, this is an older drawing I did a few months back, but I added a little Robot Todd up there for scale. I figured, like, he's about as big as the head of one of these monsters. And I, I knew that I was going to be drawing this panel here where he's holding the umbrella, so I just went ahead and added him to the, the drawing of them kind of coming out of that pit. Uh, that's not, a that drawing's not going to be in the book, but there was, the previous page, you kind of see them through the, the wizard's orb, them c kind of coming out of the pit. It's like, like a copy of that drawing. So this is the way I start a page. I, I, I rough in the pencils first. So these are pretty loose and rough. You can see in the, the start of it, the first couple panels are a little more refined, I think, because I, you know, I started off with those. And um, then you can see they're getting a little more, a little tighter here. Uh, I just kind of go through one pass really quick and sort of sketch in everything loosely and then go back and try to tighten them up as I go, and uh, usually the first couple panels, I, I spend a little more time with those initially, and then as it, as I am like, okay, I gotta I gotta wrap this up, I gotta put this put this down faster. They start to get a little looser, and I, I noticed back when I, I used to do like comics for other people, you know, like I did like a job for Marvel or Dark Horse or DC or something, I would try to pencil a bunch of pages in a night. Yeah, or like in a day or a couple days. And uh, I would notice that would happen with the pencil pages. A lot of times it had to do with like, oh, I have to get 11 pages in before I can invoice for money. So the pages would get looser and looser as I would go. But then sometimes they would get better. It was kind of a weird thing where uh, the the speed I had to, I had to do uh, somehow loosened me up and made me like uh, a little, uh, made the pages have some kind of energy to them that I liked a lot. So when I would go back through inking them, a lot of them I'd like, oh, I have to rework these pencils. But some of them I would be like, oh, wow, I really like the way that looks. And I just kind of did that. There was something that, some kind of subconscious part of my brain that took over. It, it'd be something I wouldn't be able to do normally. And I haven't really been able to do that well, like doing this, because I'm doing these like one page at a time. So this time, because I was wanting to wrap up the issue at the beginning of March, by the end of February, but I wasn't able to do that. Just a bunch of stuff happened and like my regular job that I'm doing, my regular uh, comics job, I'm working with a writer on something. Uh, I, I need to finish that. So I've been trying to focus more on that and, and I, I haven't really been able to work on these for the past like few weeks. And um, yeah, okay, so I'm just gonna go into this part right now, uh, enough babbling about that other stuff. I, I messed up in the lettering, you can see on the tail of that, when Robot Todd's going shh, uh, I meant was I was kind of in the in the mode of like writing for the wizard, and it, with this comic in particular, each character I wanted to have them their own like distinct lettering styles. Like some of them, you notice the, there's like the round word balloons, and then Robot Todd's you know, word balloons or thought bubbles or whatever are are rectangular. The wizard usually has these, especially when he's communicating with his minions, has these little uh, little lightning bolt tails. And I, with Todd, I didn't want the lightning bolt tails. I kind of wanted it to be like slightly robotic. That's why he has sort of like the more block lettering rather than the more organic style lettering that I do. And so I, I made a little lightning bolt tail on his shh by accident. And I thought, oh, this will be a good way to show me correcting it. A little later in the video, I'll, I'll show the, the thing I used to correct it by hand, like analog style. And then I do touch it up a little bit in Photoshop after the coloring's done. I scan the pages and I mess with the uh, lettering and clean up whatever else. But right now I'm inking with a Raphael 8404. It's usually what I use on when I'm inking these pages, at least lately. I, I used to ink them with a, a pen and then I'd switch to a brush just because it, it's actually kind of faster in some ways. It, it kind of depends on what I'm doing, like how I'm approaching it. Here's like a real time segment, one of the real-time segments, <laughs> where I'm actually going in and showing how I ink with this brush. And it doesn't seem very fast here, because I am I think I'm, I was like a little self-conscious, like, oh, there's a camera on me, and I'm going to, you know, really do this real-time and try to take my time and, you know, not 
mess up. But normally when I'm in a flow of inking, I, I'm actually going a little faster than this. Not as fast as like the time lapse would might have you believe, but uh, this seems like very, even to me, <laughs> like watching the video now, like very, very slow and, and careful. Um, and also it's a really tiny drawing too. Like if I'm working bigger, these pages are pretty, pretty small. I used to do like 11 by 17, which I guess in the UK, that's like A4 size. And um, that's like, uh, like, like one and a half times bigger than a comic book page. And, and maybe two times, I'm not exactly sure, but it, it's significantly larger than the actual, the print size. And this uh, size is the, uh, is very close to the, the finished print size. It's just a little bit bigger than the print size. And uh, it's just a, a time saver. So I feel like the, the art, um, uh, it doesn't change it that much. Like I, I even remember reading something like Alex Toast said where he, he tried to, I don't know if he did this through his whole career or what, I haven't actually seen any of his originals. Uh, but he would, uh, I heard him say something about like, try to try to work as close to the print size as possible. And I feel like he could ink anything, you know, from what I understand he could ink. I don't even know if he used a brush. I think he might've used pens, but he could use ink with anything pretty much. I mean, he was like, his, his, he refined his style to be so simple and elegant that he could ink a page really fast and then like, oh, I don't think this is working and just rip it up and throw it away. And like, I'll start over, you know, me, I'm very, uh, you know, I guess some would say like too precious about my work, but um, I, I just, um, I don't know. I feel like if I'm investing this time in it, I want it to be, I can't really afford to <laughs> rip my pages up if they're not working. Uh, so a lot of times when I'm working on a page like this, it's, uh, you know, there's some push and pull and struggle, but, you know, ultimately I, I enjoy the process and it's my process and there's not really a right or wrong way for anyone to do. It's just um, like, like guys like John Romita Jr., who I, I really like his artwork, you know, he's like, you know, the, the biggest, you know, the, I guess, iconic Marvel artist for the past, like, 20 years or something. Uh, I feel, I've heard him say stuff like his, his, you know, the faster he works, the more money he makes. And it's, it's all about, you know, getting the, getting the product done and, you know, having it look good enough to, you know, for print. But, you know, for me, it's like, it's, it's kind of a different, I'm not saying that's wrong or right or anything. It, it works for him and I like his art and I like the way it looks uh, the way I approach this, especially with my creator own stuff, it's, uh, I want to take my time with it, you know, and, and normally I, I just work like about an hour a night on these after my main work is done. It's not like this is, you know, my main priority in life. I mean, it is like ultimately, cause it's like my stuff, you know, but like, as far as like time goes, I want to, I want to, if I have like an hour to do it, I want it to be like, an hour where I, you know, uh, really take my time with it and not try to rush it. Uh, whereas like, you know, if I have like a whole day to work on something, I might try to get the page to a point where I'm satisfied with how it looks, but also not spend like seven days on one page, which sometimes I do, unfortunately, like even, you know, work for other people or work with other people, I should say. I don't want to make it sound like I don't care about that work because I do everything I do. I care about like, I, I wouldn't do this with my life if I didn't care about what I was doing. Sorry, I'm getting a little emotional <laughs> talking about this. But uh, you can, uh, you can see there that I was using this stuff called bleed proof white, Dr. Martens. I've also I think there's another brand of it called pro white. But I started using the Dr. Martens uh, bleed proof white, and it's just like an opaque white paint that you can cover up ink with, uh, and that you can kind of work on top of with gouache. I wouldn't really recommend using watercolor on top of it. So when it, when I'm watercoloring these pages, I use gouache on top of it. And there's even a little bit of like Photoshop correction I did at the end there. But if you want to scroll back or, you know, I don't know if you were paying attention to the video part of it, but you could see that I just took my, the same brush that I used to ink with and then went over the lines that I didn't like. And then you can even go over it with ink after it's dried. I would wait until it's dry. A lot of times I have like an air dryer that I'll use to, to uh, dry it too, just to speed it along. But it dries pretty fast, so you can you can ink on top of it pretty quick. 
Uh, you can also remove it too if you wanted to do, you know, get uh, water on your brush and like you can pick it up too. Um, but I'll, I'll go on with gouache because I, I use a mixture of, you can see my little palettes there on the left, a little bit of them. There's like a watercolor set on top of a gouache set and I, I use both. I, if you watch uh, any of James Gurney's videos, he's on YouTube. He has plenty of videos about mixing watercolor and gouache and they're both water-based medium and uh you know they they work well together and you can use them for different things so uh i lettered the whole thing with a fabric has steel pit pen size f which I, I think stands for fine then i do some uh washes some color washes not over the whole thing uh some artists some watercolor artists will do uh watercolor wash over the entire page in like one go and that kind of uh i i understand why you do that and it I, I feel like it's for uh just so you're not like like what i end up doing which is is tedious uh, i'll have to go in and like color all the white space that i don't want white but i also want the white of the paper in certain areas to to pop through and you can't really do that with when you do a wash over the whole thing you have to go in with white paint and add it so uh with like robot todd's outfit like in that that on the on page 19 the second page there on the the right, you can see that I left his his outfit, you know, his his tracksuit or whatever, white. Um, and even though this scene's at night and his clothes wouldn't look white, and some of the panels I I have them kind of like sort of grayed out, a little darker, you know, to signify like, oh, they're it's it's dark out, you know. I it's comic, so I can kind of do what I want with it. And I I really felt like in that panel there that I wanted it to pop and have it kind of be you know really graphic. You know, and just have his suit be all the, just the white of the paper. And same thing with the lettering, like in the word balloons and stuff. I want that to be white. And it's really hard for me to to do that with washes. So I, I, I try to control the washes somewhat. So I'll do the backgrounds first, generally. And then I'll find all the spots that uh, Robot Todd has yellow in his outfit. And I'll go and use the yellow on those. And then I try to like, okay, I'm using this color. So I want to hit all the spots that have that color. Or like, oh, I want to render all the the creatures, you know, or like do all the creatures' eyes with red, you know. And so I'll, I'll try to do all that at once and kind of work the page as a whole and then, you know, do those little things. And speaking of leaving the page of the paper white, the little lamp that Sept is sleeping next to, I wanted that to be white. To really show that this is taking place at night, you know, like that would be the biggest light source, like if you were... You know, it's not like, you know, I'm taking a picture of like a real scene or anything. This is a comic book, but I still want it to feel like, oh, this is taking place in the dark mostly. So that one little light is going to be the brightest thing on the page. And then I'm kind of cheating a little bit to having Robot Todd's outfit be white as well. But um, I just, I don't know, it's just sort of graphically, I just kind of like the way that looks, even though it's not like super realistic or anything. Um, obviously this isn't realistic. <laughs> so there's the finished page, page 18. Doot, doot, doot. It's after the scan and after I cleaned up the lettering, there's uh, page 19. And I, I changed the lettering quite a bit on this page, entirely re-lettering the second panel and changing a little bit the third and fourth panel, see if you can spot where. And here is the spread, both pages together, 18 and 19. And here's the last bit of Sept and Ember drawings I did. I did like over, I think over 130 drawings total. And the books have all been mailed out. If you've watched some of the preceding videos, I've talked about putting this book out. And this month, March, it's in previews. So March 2024, if you go to your local comic store and ask them to get order copies of Sept and Ember, uh, they're in the this month's previews through Floating World Comics, and I'll put I'll put a link in the description to Floating World Comics. They're they're who like is distributing this book for me now that the crowdfunder is over. Um, and so these are all the drawings I did for the crowdfunder. I left a little blank panel on the inside front cover of the book. It's a thirty two page book, and it's a companion piece to the Robot Todd comic that I've been doing every week you know, making videos here almost every week uh, for a while now, for a couple years, I guess. So how I did these is I penciled them first. Normally I just do straight pen drawings with no pencils when I do like, you know, sign books or drawn books. But I think I thought it would be a little easier for me just to uh, just roughly pencil them. 
and then ink them. There's some Spider-Man heads that I drew on the packages. I thought that would be fun. There's a Hellboy too. Love Mike Mignola. Someone requested I do a Hellboy sketch. And there's my character Sinclair from Popgun War. Someone also requested Fern Fells and West Wizard. If I end up making it to any comic shows this year, I'll do a drawing in one. Um, or if I do like a signing at a comic store or something like that. I'll probably do like a little event at Floating World Comics. Uh, it, maybe whenever this book comes out in stores, which should be like a few months from now. There's all my other books. And uh, if you want to join my Patreon, it's only $2 a month. Uh, thanks for watching the video. Bye.